A fever in children is a common presenting complaint, but the underlying cause can range from a simple infection to a life-threatening cause. In this video, we'll look at a general approach to a child with a fever, including red flag features. A fever is defined as a body temperature above 38 degrees Celsius that is a physiological increase of the set temperature of the body. Above 37.5 is considered a low-grade fever, and also remember that there is variation in temperature throughout the day, and also with age. Fever itself is a defence mechanism against infectious agents. When an infection is present, pyrogens, which are fever-generating agents, lead to the fever. There are exogenous pyrogens, like bacterial cell components, that cause the release of endogenous pyrogens, such as interleukin-1 or 6, that ultimately lead to the release of molecules like prostaglandin E2, which then binds to the hypothalamic thermoregulatory centres, causing an increase in temperature. Many non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs have an antipyrexial effect because they block the cyclooxygenase enzymes that cause production of prostaglandin and paracetamol is thought to have similar effects. The fever helps fight infection because there is an increase in the mobility and bactericidal power of lymphocytes, as well as increasing interferon gamma, which is an activator of macrophages, and has a direct effect on inhibiting viral replication. On top of this, the higher temperature can impair the ability of the pathogen to replicate and to survive. On the other hand, hyperthermia is a non-physiological, uncontrolled rise in body temperature that occurs when the body's ability to lose heat is inadequate. In the vast majority of cases, it is due to fever, not hypothermia, but it is also important to bear in mind. Infections are the cause in the majority of cases, with viral gastrointestinal or respiratory tract infections being the overall most common causes, followed by bacterial infections such as urinary tract infections, ear infections, and bacterial pneumonia. Although not common, central nervous system infections like meningitis and encephalitis must also be remembered, and sepsis should always be considered when faced with a febrile child. The most likely infections vary slightly with age, for example, the torch infections are more likely to be found within the first month. In some cases, there will be no obvious source of the infection, termed a fever without source, which in most cases is caused by a self-resolving viral illness. If a fever is continuous beyond three weeks, with a temperature of 38 degrees Celsius being recorded on most days, and at least one week of intense investigations, then this is defined as a fever of unknown origin. The most common causes here are infection, inflammatory disorders, and malignancies. Further investigation will be required, which is often prolonged, however empirical therapy is not as frequently required. Non-specific symptoms can include irritability, poor appetite, and lethargy, and in the case of viral infections, it is common to have a viral exanthema which is a non-specific, widespread rash that accompanies the viral infection. However, bear in mind that rash can also be a manifestation of serious underlying pathology, like in meningitis or Kawasaki disease. Common symptoms indicating the possible system affected include a cough, rhinorrhea or congestion in upper respiratory tract infections, abdominal pain, vomiting and diarrhea in gastrointestinal infections, but bear in mind that abdominal pain is non-specific and may even represent pneumonia, especially in the context of shortness of breath, or, alongside dysuria or discomfort during urination, a urinary tract infection. Increased urinary frequency is also a symptom of urinary tract infections. Ear pain, which can manifest as the child tugging on their ear, poor sleep, and possibly discharge, point towards an ear infection. Headaches may point towards sinusitis, especially in the context of congestion, but headache should also trigger a workup 
to exclude central nervous system infections that can have more obvious presentations like neck stiffness, photophobia, and a non-blanching rash, but can also be present with vague symptoms like vomiting, irritability, and lethargy. This can be the case for many infections, which is why in children it can be especially difficult to make a certain diagnosis. Features such as repeated infections, poor weight gain and growth may point towards a chronic underlying process like immunodeficiency or malignancy, while cyclical symptoms point more towards an inflammatory or rheumatoid disorder. Spotting the sick child can be difficult as some findings are subtle. NICE have provided a traffic light system to help identify serious illness, especially in those under the age of 5 years. It is divided into colour, activity, respiratory, circulation and other, therefore somewhat models the A to E approach. The red or high risk features include mottling or cyanosis and lethargy or poor rousability with no response to social cues in colour and activity, while grunting or chest in drawing are considered high risk respiratory and circulation features. Other high risk factors include a fever above 38 degrees with less than 3 months of age, a non-blanching rash or neck stiffness, focal seizures or neurological deficits, or a bulging fontanelle. It's usually possible to identify a likely suggestion or source of infection from the history and the physical exam. For example, if other members of the family are unwell, or if there is sickness in the child's nursery, this would indicate an exposure to a particular infection, as can foreign travel. Characteristics of the fever itself can also help. For example, higher temperatures and shorter duration of symptoms suggest a bacterial rather than viral cause, and low-grade prolonged fevers are more common in viral illnesses, inflammatory disorders and malignancies. It is worth noting that the severity of the fever does not correlate well with the severity of the underlying infection, and the response to antipyrexial agents is not useful in differentiating bacterial and viral causes. It's important to ask about the vaccination history and features surrounding birth, for example prematurity, as an incomplete vaccine history or prematurity may increase the likelihood of a serious underlying infection. Some cases need further investigation. In particular, those under 36 months of age tend to require more testing due to not having yet developed enough to show entirely reliable clinical signs in response to illness, and therefore they could have an occult bacteremia. These tests could include bloods, where the white blood cell count and other inflammatory markers like C-reactive protein may be looked at as non-specific markers of inflammation, blood cultures, serological tests looking for cytomegalovirus or the Epstein-Barr virus as well as HIV can also be done, urinalysis and urine culture, imaging such as chest x-ray and even more invasive exams such as lumbar puncture are also possibilities while a blood smear may be used to investigate the possibility of hematological malignancy. Treatment depends largely on the underlying suspected cause, as well as its severity. Fever itself is a manifestation of an underlying process, and does not require treatment itself unless it is causing discomfort to the child. The underlying cause of the fever itself should be treated when indicated, in those with suspected bacterial infections, antibiotics are used targeting the specific source, while in severely unwell patients, empirical intravenous antibiotics may be required. Antivirals are indicated in some cases, for example in herpes simplex infections like encephalitis, but it is also at times used in chickenpox and shingles as well. Oseltamivir is a neuroaminidase inhibitor, that can be used for treatment of influenza in at-risk patients. Antipyrexial agents like paracetamol or ibuprofen are mostly used to relieve the fever, although they do not aid in reducing the duration of infection and will not have an effect on hypothermia, as we saw in the pathophysiology. Aspirin is avoided due to the association with Reyes syndrome, which is a form of encephalopathy 
featuring hepatic dysfunction that comes from mitochondrial injury. Encouraging oral intake will help prevent dehydration and this may be facilitated by using anaesthetic or anti-inflammatory throat spray like benzodiamine hydrochloride in cases where the child has a sore throat. Intravenous fluids are needed in the more severe cases.